<laughs> so you're thinking about moving to Charleston, South Carolina, and you want to know what it's going to cost you? Well, in this video, we'll be breaking down the cost of living in Charleston in 2023 so that you'll have a better idea of what to expect when it comes to your expenses in the holy city. We'll cover housing, food costs, and maybe even a few expenses you weren't considering. So let's dive right in. Before we get started, my name is Kristen Garcia, and I'm an expert real estate advisor specializing in Charleston, South Carolina. I've lived in Charleston for almost 30 years, and if you're considering buying or selling a property here in the Low Country, my team would be happy to help you. All of our contact info is in the description below. Now, according to payscale.com, the cost of living in Charleston, South Carolina is 2% lower than the national average. So it's just a little bit more affordable than average. So let's talk about housing costs first. Housing costs in Charleston are 3% less than average. Housing prices in Charleston can vary greatly depending on the area that you decide to live in. So the Charleston area encompasses three counties. We call it the Tri-County area. There's Charleston County, Dorchester County, and Berkeley County. And the median home price in the Tri-County area is about 425,000 as of April, 2023. The median is 569,000 in Charleston, 390,000 in Berkeley County and 383,000 in Dorchester County. So the median increases the closer you get to the city center. Charleston County includes places like James Island, West Ashley and Mount Pleasant. And Somerville will be in either Dorchester or Berkeley County. Monk's Corner and Goose Creek typically will also be in Berkeley County. And you'll find a wide range of prices from around 300,000 all the way up to a million and more. Renting is also a popular option in Charleston with three bedroom apartments and three bedroom homes ranging from $1,500 a month up to $2,500 a month. Trendy areas like King Street and the French Quarter tend to have higher rental prices, while more affordable options can be found in areas like West Ashley, North Charleston, and Somerville. So next, we're gonna talk about food costs. Charleston is known for its fantastic culinary scene, but for day-to-day -day living, you'll wanna know the cost of groceries. And according to payscale.com, the cost of groceries in Charleston on average is 3% higher than the rest of the United States. So for example, a gallon of milk might cost you around $2.49, and a loaf of bread might cost around $3.98. You'll find these prices at your local Harris Teeter or Publix, and if you're looking for more budget options, we also have Aldi and Trader Joe's in Charleston too. If you're dining out, the average meal will cost around $14 to $25. However, if you wanna experience Charleston's renowned seafood or indulge in low country cuisine, expect to pay a little more for upscale dining. The cost for a three course meal at a mid range restaurant is about $65 per person. And before we get into the transportation costs, if you're finding the video helpful so far, please like the video and consider subscribing to learn more about living in Charleston. Now let's move on to transportation costs in Charleston. While Charleston does have public transportation options like buses, most people rely on having their own car. The average cost of car insurance for full coverage is about $1,470 per year, and gas prices are currently over $3 per gallon. Recently, I have seen $3.09 in Somerville and $3.29 in Mount Pleasant. So it's worth noting that Charleston's gas prices are often below the national average. Of course, we have the rideshare services like Uber and Lyft. Those are readily available if you prefer not to own a car, but really, that can get pricey quick. Charleston also has a public bus system called Carta, with a one-way fare costing $3.50 and a monthly pass being $99. Additionally, there are bike sharing programs like Holy Spokes that you'll find throughout the downtown area too. Now let's talk about another essential aspect, Charleston's utilities. Utility costs in Charleston are generally higher than the US average. The average electric bill, according to energysage.com, is $170 a month in Charleston. And that's probably because the AC is running most days out of the year. Moving on to healthcare costs, Charleston is home to excellent medical facilities. And healthcare costs in Charleston are about 6% lower than the national average. A standard doctor's visit without insurance costs around $117, and a dental checkup may cost around $100. Now let's talk about the fun stuff, the cost of entertainment. Charleston offers a vibrant arts and culture scene with plenty of entertainment options. The average cost of a movie ticket is around $11, while tickets to live music venues can range from $10 to $100, depending on the artist and the venue. You'll find music options at the Charleston Music Farm and also the Charleston Music Hall. And for sports enthusiasts, attending a Charleston River Dogs baseball game can cost around $10 to $16. Outdoor activities like exploring the beautiful beaches, visiting historic sites, or enjoying parks are usually free or low cost. So Cypress Gardens, for example, is $10 a person, 
and parking at the Isle of Palms beach is $2 per person and $20 per car during peak seasons. So given that, I recommend that you get a park pass. It's $70 for a year and you don't have to pay parking fees at the beach and entrance fees at other Charleston County parks. So it's a great deal if you get the Charleston County park pass. Now membership fees for gyms or fitness studios can range from $12 at Planet Fitness to $50 at Crunch or O2 and to $100 a month for boutique gyms. For example, High Low Fitness I think is $150 a month and I personally go to Iron Tribe and that's $200 a month, but that's one of the pricier gyms. Now, when it comes to childcare and education, the average cost for full-time childcare at a daycare ranges from $800 a month to $1,200 a month or more, depending on where you live in Charleston. Private school tuition varies greatly with annual fees ranging from $10,000 to $25,000 or more a year. I know Porter Goud, for example, costs $26,000 for elementary school and $35,000 for middle and high school and they do offer financial aid too so check if your private school offers that so while you may pay slightly more than the national average to live in Charleston you'll find that the cost of living here is still more affordable compared to other major cities around the country the unique charm the beautiful landscapes and the rich history of Charleston make it a great place to call home if you're still considering making a move to Charleston or anywhere in the low country feel free to reach out to me and my team we can give you specific information and help you navigate the real estate market in Charleston. Our contact information is in the description below. And if you're on the fence about whether you should buy or rent in Charleston, I made a video about that here. So click here to check it out.